Oh my gosh, guys, this video does not want to get made. I have run into so many technical difficulties. I am this close to just Xing it out. I don't want to give up though. I had things planned for this video and it's just not working. <sighs> okay, calm, stay calm. Hi, I'm Tina Marie Hammer and Spoons and today what I'm going to share with you is mom's famous strawberry pie recipe, um, a very treasured and cherished uh, childhood memory of mine. I'm going to share the story of her Sunday cup and I have a couple of really cool vintage photos that I found that I want to share with you and I'll share that at the end of the video but first let me explain something. Um, I started out building this video over the past few days, started out with going out into my garden. I was going to pick some roses and bring them into the house for my mom. Um, I like to do that, you know, for Mother's Day, things like that. And um, for those of you who don't know me personally, you know, my mom has passed on. And so I do these things to remember her and to um, acknowledge the day, right? So I went outside to get some flowers and you'll see in the video, that didn't work out, <laughs> couldn't pick those flowers. So then I proceeded to follow the recipe to make mom's strawberry pie. And I think I was just so stressed over making sure that I had everything perfect. Everything had to be perfect that the sound went out a few seconds after I started speaking. So you see a lot of gestures, you see my hands moving, you see the pie becoming a pie and there's no sound. So I will share this content with you with, I'll have to walk you through it. I'll have to do some voiceovers for that part. Um, so take a look next as I show you how to make mom's famous strawberry pie. And then stay tuned because I'm going to continue sharing some of my favorite memories of mom. Take a look. Okay, so guys, this is mom's strawberry pie recipe. It's a fresh strawberry pie, and um, she made this with fresh strawberries and cream cheese. And there on the video, I'm showing you that from the strawberries that I had, I kept all the pretty ones trimmed and sliced um, just for a pretty presentation. And then I took the most of the ripe ones I took and chopped up into dice-sized pieces. And I'm going to take those and mash them to make at least one cup of crushed strawberries. And as you can see on the screen, I have, um, as you can see on the camera, I have a ready-made prepared, just a regular basic dough crust. I have some cornstarch and some sugar and some water. And aside from the strawberries, that's all you're going to need for this recipe. Um, the Pie shell was a pie shell I bought frozen that you just bake in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes, which is what I did before I started this process. Um, but another cool trick that my sister was telling me is because it's kind of like a summer recipe, if you want to use a graham cracker crust, that's totally fine. You can find those at the store in a package. You just take it out. And after you make your strawberry syrup and prepare the cream cheese, you'll be all set. So either way will be fine. Again, I'm adding a cup of crushed strawberries to the pot and I'm going to put it on a medium to low heat. Um, during this part of the video, I, I don't know why I chose to move the rest. Oh, I moved the recipe because I couldn't read it from where it was. The recipe that I have on the stove in front of me is from my website. And so there will be a link at the bottom of this video or the description, a link to this recipe. Um, so now I'm taking the one cup sugar and I'm pouring it into the pan with the strawberries. Now I noticed as I was stirring these together, the, the sugar, and then I'm going to add the cornstarch in a second. On the website, on the recipe, it says that you're supposed to add the sugar and the cornstarch first and then slowly add the water and the strawberries. I don't know if that would work out because it would be dry. So my recommendation is you can do this method that I'm showing on the screen and my recipe will be updated to show this method. It worked just fine. Another option that I've seen is you can use the sugar, the cornstarch, and the water first 
and then slowly add your berries. I think the way I did it and the way I'm gonna update my recipe, I think works out better because you don't want it to be too runny. Adding the water at the end really helped my glaze thicken to the consistency that I was looking for. So I'm just gonna let this cook over the medium to high heat. I think it was on medium heat, by the way. And I'm checking the spatula occasionally to see how thick the, the sauce is. Right now it's thin enough to where it's not coating the spatula that much. And as you can see it, as you heat it up, um, it thickens pretty quickly. One thing in the recipe you'll notice, see how it's thickening on the spatula. One thing you'll notice is you'll need to stir this constantly. So what I'm using here is a heat proof spatula. So if you're gonna use a spatula to stir, make sure it's heat proof. Otherwise just use like a wooden spoon or whatever you have. And as I'm watching the sauce thicken, now I'm letting it boil for at least a minute to continue cooking through um, from that thickening. Now it looks like it's getting a little dry, so I'm gonna start adding a little bit of water, a little bit at a time, just till I get the consistency that I'm looking for. It doesn't take much. Um, whatever I didn't use, I kept, because after the sauce or glaze cooled, you can use the water to bring it back to a more pliable, um, easier to use version of itself or consistency. So whatever water you don't use, just leave it there in the measuring cup because you might need to use it once you take it off the heat and it cools down. You don't wanna add more water than you need. Um, so basically that's the ending of that step, uh, making the glaze. And we're just gonna put that aside and it's gonna cool. I didn't use food coloring. You can use food coloring, it's optional. I chose not to. Um, but that's completely up to you. You can use regular, just regular food coloring dye or um, any natural substitute works fine too. Now I'm beating eight ounces of cream cheese and I don't know where the footage went, but I was showing you on camera, I don't eat cheese. And so I'm using a Dea product. It's a Dea plant-based cream cheese that um, you, it's up to you. You can use any kind of cream cheese you want, but you only need about eight ounces. And I'm gonna just whip it up until it becomes just a little bit easier to spread. And I noticed when I was looking at this footage, I love how I managed to keep this in shot. I mean, really, come on, <laughs> you can barely see what I'm doing, but I'm spreading the cream cheese along the bottom of the pie crust. And slowly I let the cream cheese edge up to the edge of the pie shell. I think that would hold the pie um, the best. And then I reached for the strawberries that I had kept chilled in the fridge while I was working, or while, I, while the sauce was cooling. And now I'm just gonna place them on the pie. I'm using my food safe gloves. Every, anytime I prepare food that people are gonna eat, obviously I'm gonna put my gloves on. So I'm gonna arrange the strawberries. Um, eventually I had to start slicing them because they were so large. I was afraid I wouldn't have enough. I was very glad that I had enough, but I started slicing them to make sure they all fit pretty well. And then, like I mentioned, the glaze was cooling off to the side, but I did add a little bit of water just to make it a little bit more um, or a little bit easier to work with. So I'm gonna spread that over the top of the pie. And then once this is done, once the pie is fully covered, it's just gonna be ready for the fridge and you can chill it for at least three hours in the fridge and it's ready to serve after that. And there's the finished product. I had been eyeing these roses from the kitchen window. I could see them, but now that I'm up close, it looks like they're, they're dried out. Hmm. Sorry, there's noise from my neighbor, but look, there's some little buds coming out. You know what I'll do? I'm gonna leave this alone and I'll come back. Oh, that doesn't look good. What is that? That looks like some kind of, um, what is that, like a fungus or like a pest or something? Ew, I'm gonna have to investigate that. There's a little teeny tiny rose right here. There's a lot of buds coming out. Um, whoa, big spider web, or no, that's, I don't know what that is. Um, it's growing differently than it grew last year. Last year it was a little bit wider. I think I might have lost some branches. Leo, Leo kind of went crazy with the uh, gardening last summer or last spring, and 
I think I lost one of the trunks of this rose bush. But yeah, I, I was planning to come out here and snipping these roses, but I don't think, I don't think they're ready. I think I need to leave her alone, but I think I need to treat her. Something's not right. I need to, I need to treat her. I'm gonna take a picture of this and see if I can research. Oh yeah, I see like some pest on the leaves. Yeah, I'm gonna have to treat this rose bush. Hey guys, okay, I'm back. Um, this pie, I served this. So remember I told you guys I had technical difficulties. I was sitting in another room, I filmed, I don't know how many segments to add to this video, started eating my pie, and then when I realized the video was bad, I, <laughs> I stopped eating my pie so I could figure this out. And so I still have the pie to finish, yummy. But let me talk to you guys about my mom's Sunday cup. Um, mom had a few sets of these and this is just regular, I got my lipstick on it there. This is just a regular uh, Princess House crystal. I don't know if a lot of you know about Princess House. Google it. Um, it's been around for a long time and mom loved crystal. She has, she had so much crystal and I did too because yeah, I love crystal too. So mom and I used to collect it all the time and if she saw something that she thought I would like, she would buy it. Um, and she would kind of joke around with me and, and my sister saying, well, you're going to end up with it, right? So yeah, this was mom's collection. Um, her Sunday cup, I don't know why she called it her Sunday cup, but I do know I can tell you about my mom in that Sunday was like mom's day of rest. It was the day she could take a break and just take a pause. And it was a day where she would normally uh, visit one of us, myself or one of my sisters, or she would be driving around hanging out with her best friend. Um, Sundays were just, I think, mom's favorite day. And I think she just enjoyed this um, this moment, making the moment and enjoying the moment of her coffee. Um, today, if you look on Instagram, people romanticize things all the time. You'll see romanticizing washing dishes or romanticizing baking bread. And what that means is people just enjoy the moment. They'll light a candle, maybe another candle, flowers, maybe music, and they enjoy that moment. And I think mom was doing that. She was enjoying a moment of having her cup of coffee in her Sunday cup. Mom drank hers black. I'm I'm a sissy lala. I have to have something in it. I have oat milk in my coffee. And sometimes you'll see me, like today I'm super tired. We've been up a couple of nights um, pretty late or maybe all night because our fur baby's been sick. So if I look tired, it's because I've been video, <laughs> I've been filming myself for days and I've been staying up late at night or overnight with our little doggy to get him through his, his little upset stomach. Um, so you might see me sometimes, I don't have one in front of me, but a big cup of coffee is what I usually have in front of me. Um, but anyways, this is mom's Sunday cup and this is what she used to uh, enjoy her, her coffee. Um, like I said, kind of like a trailblazer because she was romanticizing that moment. Um, another thing mom did, and if I find it, I will put it at the end of the video. Um, we found a picture of mom when she was about 15 because the date on the photo, I believe it said 1957, which makes my mom 15. And it looked like she had grabbed a camera, like a Polaroid or something. And she went like this and took a picture. And we have it. And I'm so glad that we have that photo and if I can find it I and I think I do have it because we went through it when we went through mom's things we went through her photos I will put it at the end of the video I have another picture there I'm so lucky that when mom was carrying me someone took a picture of her at her baby shower and that will forever be like my favorite my favorite mom picture because I know that's I tell people that's when mom was baking me <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna try and salvage whatever I can that, of this footage. I hope you enjoy uh, reminiscing with me and sharing these memories with me. I know sometimes it can be difficult. Um, sometimes it's difficult for me, but just so, know that you're not alone. And if, I, I swear the video I, I recorded earlier, I was a little bit more emotional. I almost ugly cried. And so I want to tell you, if you feel that way, I'm right here with you. I'm doing the same thing. It's, it's okay. 
Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope wherever you are, you are feeling safe and loved. I hope you come back and visit me again. Uh, the next video is going to be a lot of fun because I'm going to share with you tons of antiquing, antiquing, and I've found some really interesting pieces that I'll share with you. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video and this time with me. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe because you'll be able to see all the stuff that I have to share. Um, but yeah, thank you again for, for spending today with me. Um, as I close out this video, I will share with you, I was able to scrape some flowers together from my front yard. Um, they're not blooming yet. I think it's too early. I think with the weather we've had, it's just too early to, to get the good blooms off my flowers, but they were mom's favorite. Um, I had them here in this house and unfortunately mom never got to see this house, but I had them in other homes and she always told me they were her favorite. She always told me to make sure that I, that I had them in my yard to make sure I got them. And when we bought this house, they were here. It's incredible that somehow mom's spirit just always is with me. Um, in the backyard, I have flowers that were my grandmother's favorite. And I found roses, which are my other grandmother's favorite, my two grandmothers. So I feel like they're always around me. They're always watching over me. Um, yeah. Bye guys. Thank you.